Hey there, CJ Math students. I'm going to help you out with homework 4.6. Key, key thing tonight. Remember your integer rules of DSN and SSP. Different signs, negative. Same signs, positive. Right? So a negative and a negative, that's going to give you a positive. But a positive and a negative is going to give you a negative. So, number one, negative 8 times 8 is negative 64x plus... Negative 8 times 7 is negative 56. So that's what you're looking for. Now, right away, you're like saying, oh, that's not in the answer case. Yes, it is. It's right there. You just got to do plus a negative, right? I would, if I were you, go through the entire homework and say plus a negative, both to the problems and the answer choices. That way, you're not confused when you get an answer that's actually equivalent to one of the answer choices, and you're saying, but it's not in the answer choice. Plus a negative to every single problem changing all addition or sorry all subtraction into adding the opposite that way we don't get confused by what's a negative and what's a minus sign okay um, I'll do that last one there on that page. all right uh, number three so negative 9 times positive 3n gives you negative 27n and then a negative 9 times a negative 5 gives me a positive 45. Again, I'm being super careful about my negative signs. You've got to, got to watch for negative signs. You can't just like multiply and be like, okay, I got it. You've got to ask yourself every single time, should that be positive? Should that be negative? Number 5, uh, a negative 8 times a negative 4. That's a positive 32m. And then a negative 8 times a negative 4. Again, that's a positive 32 a. Uh, number seven, we both have to distribute and combine like terms. So a negative five times a seven, that gives me negative 35 uh, plus a negative five times a six, that gives me negative 30x. You do not multiply all the way to the 5x. You only multiply what's inside the parentheses. So you just bring down your plus 5x. Again, you do not multiply that. You just bring that on down. Now we have like terms in negative 30x and 5x. So what do we do? We add them. So we got to switch from our multiplication and division rules of integers to our addition and subtraction rules. All right, so we have negative 35 plus negative 30x plus 5x. Those are different signs. That doesn't mean, oh, my answer is negative automatically. It means I need to do different signs, subtract, and keep the one that has more, DSSM. So 30 minus 5 happens to be 25, and that gives me negative 25 because there were negative more negatives, so negative 25x. Rewind this and listen to me again if that was confusing because problem number 8 is very similar to it, and you need to make sure you understand your multiplication and division integer rules as well as your addition and subtraction rules. You need to be able to flip-flop between those two very fluently. All right, number nine. So what should I multiply here? Should I multiply the eight by both of those things? Like, that's kind of crazy. No, you always multiply the number that's next to the parentheses. So it's six times three n and six times eight. So you can bring your negative eight down, right? That stays exactly the same, plus six times three n is 18 n. Don't forget your variables when you're multiplying. And six times eight is 48. So now you're like, there are no like terms. Yes, there are. There's these constants, negative 8 and 48. You've got to have a keen eye for things that are like terms. Do they have the same variable? So sometimes they don't have variables. Find other things that don't have variables. So negative 8 plus 48. Again, switch from your multiplication and division rules to your addition and subtraction rules. A negative 8 plus a positive 48. Again, that's a different sign subtract. Keep the sign that we have more of. So 48 minus 8 gives you 40. We have more positives than we do negatives, so it stays positive, plus 18n. Okay, so D. Again, I would rewind the video, watch this again, and try and do number 10. You've got to, got to, got to be super careful with this. You cannot just mindlessly multiply and add. There are integer rules that you have to pay attention to. Flip to the back side. So, Again, I would highly encourage you to change everything to plus and negative, both in your problems and in your answer choices, so you can clearly see what your uh, answer should be or equivalent uh, answer could be. All right. 
So now that we've done that, let's do number 11. Again, the only thing you multiply is the number next to the parentheses, not this 7n. You leave that alone. So negative 5 times 8. You've got to recognize the negative sign. That's negative 40. And negative 5 times 5n. Again, recognize you're multiplying a negative times a positive. So that gives you negative 25n. And don't forget your variable. There's a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of stuff to keep track of. Bring down your 7n. 7n, and you can bring down the plus sign, plus negative 40, plus negative 25n. So now look for like terms. So we have 7n and negative 25. You have to, again, get used to switching between rules. So again, this is DSSM. Different sign subtract. 25 minus 7 gives you 18. We have more negatives, so therefore it's negative 18n plus negative 40. I think the best way to do these problems is to literally try and whisper to yourself as you're doing it. You're saying, negative 5 times 8, okay, that's negative 40, negative 5. Like, if you just mindlessly do this, guys, you will be hurting when you get your grade back on this, right? Um, number 7, or 13, sorry. 7 times negative 5, that is a negative 35. Positive times a negative, negative. 7 times negative 3x, that is a negative 21x. Positive 7 times negative 3, okay? Bring down your plus 6x. Don't forget about it. Make sure you have everything. Okay, you're good to go. Look for like terms. I have a positive 6 and a negative 21x. Obviously not a like term. So again, DSSM, different sign, subtract, keep the sign that you have more of. So 21 minus 6 gives you 15. I have more negative, so therefore it's negative 15x. And you can just bring down your negative 35. Negative 35 plus negative 15x, B. Okay, again, when you're doing these problems, don't come up to me like, I oh, don't get it. Rewind and watch again. It's straightforward. You just got to keep track of your, of your rules. You got to kind of talk yourself through it. Um, okay, so directions. Use the model to the right for problems 1 through 8. So we have a 12 here and a 3x plus 3 and a 12 and a 2x plus 2. Which of the following represents is equal to the length of AC. So A to C. They want to know this length right here. Basically they're saying, all right, that chunk is 3x plus 3, and that chunk is 2x plus 2. So if I wanted to find the total length, I just add them together. And I find my like terms. So 3x plus 2x, and then 3 plus 2. 3x plus 2x is 5x. 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so C. Right? Very straightforward. Um, number three, which, uh, sorry, select the expression that represents the perimeter of rectangle B, C, D. So let's go over here. Here's the perimeter. B to C to D to E. Now we've got to fill in some stuff. If this is 2x plus 2, that means this right here is 2x plus 2. And if this is 12, we can actually shift that over. That means this right here is 12. And this right here is 12. So perimeter just means you need to add up everything around, right? So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of like terms to combine. So we have 2x plus 2 plus 12, right? What have I done right now? I've added this guy and this guy. Now I'm going to add this guy and this guy. Plus 2x plus 2 plus 12. All I have to do now is look for all my like terms. And i got a bunch of them. 2x there's another 2x, okay? And then we got all these um, 2, 12, 2, 12, right? Those are all just whole numbers, right? So 2x and 2x gives me 4x. 2 plus 12 is um, 14. 2 plus 12 is 14. So then 14 plus 14 gives you 28. Some of you may be like, I am totally confused. Rewind, watch where I got the numbers from. It all makes sense. Basically, this problem is just asking you, okay, you have this really long expression, um, and we want you to just simplify it. That's all it's saying, but they're giving it to you in a geometry question. They're saying, hey, this fancy word, perimeter, the distance around a shape, right? Um, use these expressions that we've given you and find us the distance around that shape. How do I do that? I add all of them up, and when I have variables, right, um, I combine like terms. All right, number five. Um, which expression is equal to the perimeter of ACDF? So here's ACDF, so this whole thing. So I'm going to erase. I recommend that you erase as well so you don't get confused by some of the numbers. And you want A to C to D. 
to D to F and over, right? Um, so guys, we already solved in question number one what the length of A to C was, right? So we can actually cross this stuff off and write down what we solved for, which is 5x plus 5. This whole thing, the length of it, when we combine like terms, is 5x plus 5. So what's that mean for the bottom? This whole thing from F to D is also going to be 5x plus 5. This whole side is 12, so we know the rectangle of the other side has got to be 12. So again, it's just a fancy way for saying, find me the perimeter of that shape. Take this expression, add them all up, and simplify. So we have 5x plus 5 on top plus 12 on the right-hand side, right? 5x plus 5, 12. Now we're going to add that and that. And at the bottom, 5x plus 5. And we're going to add the 12. So again, just look for the like terms. So we got two 5x's. I got 5 and 12. Sorry, double underline. 5 and 12. 5x and 5x, that's 10x. 5 plus 12 is 17. And I know I got another 5 plus 12, which is another 17. So 17 plus 17 is 34. So A, all right? Um, number six is a little bit tricky because it asks for area, and we haven't talked about area just yet. Um, but for area, they just want you to multiply the length times the width. So for AB, and uh, you might want to have to erase that again so you can actually see what they said it was. For AB, the length is 3x plus 3. Where am I getting that? Right here. Here's your length, right? And it said, okay, that's worth 3x plus 3. And your width is 12 right there. Um, so you don't have to worry about the other sides because area is all about everything on the inside. And how do we do that? We multiply. So 12 times, or parentheses, 3x plus 3. And look at this. This is exactly what we've been working with all day. Distributive property. All right, I'll let you work out the rest. 2 and 4. Don't just be like, oh, it's too hard. I don't want to do it. Rewind and watch. You guys are so smart. You can do this. Call me if you have questions.